Previously on Two Up and Overloaded, we just started our first motorcycle ride on the island of Borneo. And it began a little rough. We left the port village of Kumai and headed inland into Kalimantan the Indonesian side of Borneo, where few foreigners ever overland. We didn't know really what to expect by the road, and first impressions were not very good. Yeah. It was a little beat up, to say the least. Yeah. The motorcycle that we were on, the Bajaj Pulsar 220, it's an older motorcycle. Its mm. suspension is pretty bad, and this road, it was not the best road for our motorcycle. No, and it's not the best motorcycle for any road. So the combination <laughs> of those two factors made it uh, bumpy and grindy. Poor Dorko. Yeah, dork nuts, I call it now. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, good old Dork Nut. Its name, name is Dorko. Okay, <laughs> Dorko. That's already bad enough. <laughs> but once we passed the junction to Pankalanbun, the potholes vanished and the pavement improved. This is the story of riding a motorcycle in a part of the world that few people ever get to experience. The Indonesian side of the island of Borneo, the third largest island on Earth, is one of the least populated places in the world. It's full of mysterious forests, stunning mountains, and it also turns out that it has awesome roads that twist right through it all. So why aren't motorcyclists from around the world flocking to this incredible destination? Well, it all boils down to one thing. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa no tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh. All the places we'll go Through rain and through seed and through mud and through snow Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see We've been to a country or two Or three Oh, all the, the fun we've, we've had You have you along would make us real glad So give us a like and, and hit subscribe To join us along our epic ride Thankfully, the road did improve. The motorcycle didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Just gradually got worse and worse as we rode it. Still, the scenery wasn't exactly what we were hoping for yet because it was mostly palm oil trees yeah. that were surrounding us. And to be fair, right? Like, you know, there's controversy about palm oil and, you know, it's a way for an industry to, you know, for this country to make money. Um, and it also, they tear down the rainforest, which everybody we can all boo at once. So yes. there's no, whatever. But just as a passer buyer, it has a certain beauty to it. You know, it's foreign to us, so it's not like, you know, a thousand elm trees in a row. It's, they're, they're, they're furry bases, they're quite pretty. It, they yeah. look quite tropical, you know, so. It is pretty. At least it's not hideous as well as land destroying. But we were really hoping for some real rainforest. I mean, this is what the island of Borneo is yeah. famous for. But we were realizing that anywhere they put a road is a good opportunity to put the palm oil because that's where the trucks can go. Hence the crappy roads and the palm oil <laughs> and us on Thork Nuts. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> Dorko, 
Let's don't go. go. All right. <laughs> there were really not that many towns, very few people that we were passing. Yeah. But eventually we did come to a place where we could have lunch. We found a place that's actually serving food. Yay! And I was excited to pull over because it's hot, folks. Oh, it's, it's like hot. any opportunity we can find anywhere with running water to soak our little neck buff thing and our our shirts. You yeah. know, it's a great reason to pull over. And we were hungry. So Kalimantan has less traffic, even though there's still a bunch of like trucks and stuff going on. It's a bunch of palm trees, uh, palm oil trees. A lot of potholes, but Dorco's making it all right. Um, but it's hot. It's, it's much better than the the traffic on Jakarta. Yeah. yeah. And on Java. That's what. Yes, this is very true. <laughs> Pretty good so far, but yeah, it is hot. <laughs> and finding places to eat isn't quite as easy as on Java. I almost killed us twice pulling over. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and this place was perfect. They kept bringing out all of this extra food for us to try. They saw us as like guinea pigs. Like, yes. Look at these weird people. They never had any of the stuff, you know? And he's like Chef Gordon Ramsay or whatever, be like, hey, try some of this crap. And we're like, space Whoa. monkey <laughs> testicles. <laughs> like, ooh. It's like that stuff in uh, Africa that was like mashed potatoes. Oh, terima kasih. Sama sama. Potato. potato. But it's not potato. It's yeah, I think it's like a or a, a yucca or taro root. So the first thing was basically like a potato, but it's it wasn't steamed potatoes. No, I knew it was potato. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No one wants to see me eat a potato. <laughs> But the next thing they brought out, I didn't know it at the time, but this was going to be the first time in my life Spoiler of alert. having my new favorite fruit. This is true. She can't get enough of it. From I here cannot. on out, every video is going to be Marissa eating this new food that she called a lychee. I thought it was lychee fruit. I didn't know what it was. Um, it turns out it's not, it's related, but this is the one, the only, the glorious Rambutan. Do you break them open? How? Yeah, you. I don't know how to break them open. I think we need to ask. Wow. Very good. I love the flavor. Very subtle, fresh flavor. Tim calls them orangutans. I do. And then <laughs> I'm always with Marissa, so like I get to talk like an idiot because I never have to actually speak to people. Except because to say, I like, can Thank say you. it correctly. Yeah. <laughs> but like one day she was at home and I'm looking for this food and like I'm like, crap, I just call it orangutan all the time. I can't <laughs> ask can't people like go to the supermarket. My wife loves orangutan. orangutan. But the real food they had there was also excellent. Yeah, nasi know, goreng. Like, oh my god. Uh, mee goreng. Mi goreng. Something fried. And it so was this good. is either rice delicious. or noodles yeah. that are fried. After lunch, we tried to get on the road again, but your phone had overheated. Yeah. It would, pro tip, if you're in Indonesia, <laughs> take your, if you're using the phone as a GPS or even a GPS, like just take it off your bike, put it in the shade, put it in your pocket. Because my, my iPhone, yeah. it's like an iPhone 7, so it's old, but I just use it for GPS purposes and it's nice. Phone is overheated. I guess that makes sense. And uh, yeah, it. I'm, I'm surprised the battery didn't like swell to yeah, five times. Yeah, I'm size. surprised it didn't. But explode. Google Maps is just like, no compute. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but finally, the phone, the maps, loaded up and we're yeah, like, yeah, it started but, again. And to be honest, there's like drive northwest. I mean, there's only one road. There's that so. one road, <laughs> you know. And I stuck the key in the Dorco. Bike isn't starting again. Oh. It's just nothing. Yeah, so we got the phone working, and then the motorcycle didn't work. Okay, well that's good, but my confidence is very low. And but, I, we don't really know what the problem was, but yeah. I messed around with uh, the battery wires again. 
for no good reason apparently it started up which is sometimes the worst case because like i didn't solve an issue and it yeah. started but here we go to drive off into the middle of nowhere yet again yep. um and we got on and we did your set and we didn't really know what the problem was except for that it was a bajaj pulsar 220 that was the root of the issues <laughs> The road definitely had a section of not so perfect pavement. And like this was like the Indonesian equivalent for the Bajaj Pulsar 220. Yeah. Of like the, the Colorado back country discovery routes back yeah. in the state, which are amazing, by the way. And this is a good opportunity to say thank you to Emmaus Moto Tours. Emmaus Moto Tours is an awesome motorcycle tour company that will take you on the backcountry discovery routes, which are, pretty much everyone knows this, some of the best roads in true. the United States. I think the word is fandubulous. Fandubulous. Bam. They do have their tricky sections though, so it is always good to go with a guide and with a group of people who are there to go through the experience with you. The fine folk over at BDR have created some awesome routes that all link together and that matched up perfectly with Emmaus Moto Tours. You will love every moment and every mile. You will struggle and you will sweat. Uh, some of it is, is fairly difficult, but man, by the end of the day, everybody's high-fiving and it's just an absolutely amazing time. So a huge shout out to them. We wanted to dedicate this road to Emmaus Moto Tours and check them out at EmmausMototours.com. Most of the people and villages that we were passing on the road were from the local indigenous Dayak people. And that's kind of an umbrella term to many different groups of indigenous people of the island of Borneo. But you can tell their buildings and structures because yeah. they have these awesome intricate designs and colors and... Uh, different part of the world, but they had like these cool like biking things at the top of the roof. Yes, I and everything's on stilts. Yeah. They also had a lot of those bird houses where yeah. they're uh, collecting the nests of the swiftlet birds and selling those nests to be eaten. It's an industry. It's an industry, folks. We hear it's not the familiar because it's the Indonesian version of like the ice cream song, but I'm like, I, from my childhood, I know yeah. there's the universal, you know, ice sound cream truck. Of, yeah, but this is like an ice cream motorcycle. <laughs> so just like the ice cream trucks we have back at home, they have an ice cream motorcycle here. And of course, we have to get some. And it was awesome. And there's like two people there. It's a dude and his buddy. And I'm like, you just sell an ice cream to your buddy? Like, what's. what's <laughs> Where's the people? Oh, it's real ice cream. Yes. Vanilla dan chocolate. Terima kasih. Berapa harganya? Wow. Very delicious. Perfect. Oh my goodness. Especially for such a hot day. They did. Oh my god. I could have sat there and just eaten that ice cream all day long. It was mm -hmm. absolutely amazing. Thank you. We started to get the impression that riding in Kalimantan was glorious, gorgeous, and a missed opportunity for many motorcyclists who love a good road. Mountains of green, paved, twisty roads, stunning vistas, a motorcyclist's heaven. There's one reason why no one rides here. It's hard to get to this island. It's pretty remote. Yeah, I mean, we took a motorcycle from within Indonesia and we still had to take it on this ferry. If you're taking a motorcycle from outside of Indonesia, you need a carnet de passage, which is an expensive document. Yeah. 
Um, and then you still have to take like an overnight ferry to get there. It's, it's just difficult. There's nowhere to like on the Indonesian side of Kalimantan to like rent a, 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 a motorcycle to ride yeah. the rest of the Indonesian side. So unless you've brought your own motorcycle over, it's fairly difficult to get to. But we were loving it. We were so thankful that we had this opportunity to be riding a motorcycle, even though it was Dorco. We were Dark happy <laughs> to be riding a motorcycle on this incredible road. So that's the main reason why people aren't traveling by motorcycle in Kalimantan. But we also found out that because it is so remote and so not densely populated, it was hard finding gas. But we did find gas at this we little did. place that had it out of a barrel. Gasoline? Uh, How many liters? I think. I don't know how much a liter is. Tiga, lima. Tiga. We had our mandatory selfies. Yes, of course. <laughs> 10, 20, how much can I give him? 100. Go for the best. Thank You're you welcome. very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. And we headed on down the road. The sun started to set and it was so beautiful. The jungles were green and lush and vibrant, and the mountains were jagged. The road was twisting and weaving through it all. Yeah, we were like 45 minutes away from our little hotel. We had timed everything perfectly because the line of where we needed to be and the sun going down to the horizon was, I love it when I time things out like that. Now in general, we never book hotels because we are very flexible. You never yeah. know what's gonna happen in the day. And it's never been a problem except for places that are extremely popular, such as national parks or something where you really have to book ahead of time. Yeah. But we were in the middle of nowhere in Kalimantan. We're on like a sparsely populated yeah. island. We you know? knew where the next hotel was and we didn't think it was gonna be a problem. Bam little town that we had on our map, one of two hotels there, and there's some kind of festival, so no room for us. And as you can see, the sun has set. But that will all be in the next episode. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Ding, ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. And if you want to support us, please check out the Patreon link that we have below. You get some exclusive videos and uh, you get all of our videos ad-free, a little bit Early ahead of time. Access, yes. Yeah. And you can get postcards from, from randomly around the world. Yeah. So check out the Patreon link below. Thank you guys so much. 
Thanks, everybody. Peace. Bye. He calls me Dork Nuts. By I the do. Way. Yeah. It's my nickname. Yeah. So it's true. already taken. Okay. It's just my beautiful, <laughs> beautiful lovely lady. <laughs> some, some are more challenged than others. But, <laughs> but, yes. but unfortunately, that glorious day was going to turn into a true nightmare. That sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, read into words. <laughs>